Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And we welcome back for the first time in this role, Mary Fallon. Yes. Governor Mary Fallon will be joining us. She has been with us a number of times before, but not in her role as a governor. We want to find out uh, now that the legislature has ended its session, uh, how things are going at the governor's office, how the session went, and how she's enjoying her new job. It'll be interesting. The governor is here today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. It's time, America. Our energy future can be ours again with American natural gas. We have an abundant, affordable supply, unrivaled anywhere. One billion dollars a day for importing foreign oil isn't just a statistic, it's an opportunity. 30% lower greenhouse emissions isn't a pipe dream, it's a choice. Now is the time. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. This man is having a heart attack, and he doesn't even know he's at risk. Heart attacks aren't always as dramatic as you see on TV. Gun unchecked, heart disease could crumple everything. A simple heart scan could save your life. Get a $50 heart scan at St. Anthony, the most trusted experts in cardiovascular care. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we are honored to have the Honorable Mary Fallon join us again for her eighth appearance on The Verdict, uh, the 27th governor of the state of Oklahoma. She has a lot of firsts in her life. Uh, I'll just run through a couple of them. She was the first female Oklahoma governor. She was the first uh, woman uh, lieutenant governor and the first Republican lieutenant governor. Uh, she served in the Oklahoma House with distinction for a number of years. Then, of course, was elected to Congress uh, uh, after being lieutenant governor, was elected to Congress in the 5th District, and uh, has been recently um, swept into office uh, with a substantial margin as uh, Oklahoma's first uh, woman governor and Oklahoma's first Republican woman governor. And she's kind enough to give us some time after the session is over to come talk to us about what's been going on and how things are going. Mary, welcome back. Good to be back with you, Glad to both have of you. you. The verdict yes. audience has not had a chance to see you since you've been elected governor. So can you give us a wrap up on this, uh, the first five months here of, of, uh, yeah. of this new office? It's been a busy time, a great time. I've really enjoyed being back in Oklahoma from Congress especially. Mm -hmm. But it's been uh, extremely uh, whirlwind, fast paced, first legislative session. You know, it's, it's interesting when you take over an office, and I've done this a couple of times, from moving from the legislature to lieutenant governor, lieutenant governor, to Congress, to Congress, to governor. So I've done many of these transitions before, but you have a short window of time to get your staff in place, to hire them. I had to prepare a budget for the legislature, and I had from January to February to do that, and to prepare a balanced budget. I had to hire my cabinet secretaries. I had to prepare my legislative agenda. And so it was pretty fast paced and, and getting up and running. But thank goodness I had been in office now of 21 years. So I've had some experience and kind of knew what I was going to be getting into. But it was great. We had, I think, the most productive pro business legislative session we have ever had in the state's history. Not just because I'm there, but I've been in office, as I said, 21 years. And I've been through a lot of legislative sessions. I've seen many of the pieces of legislation. I was able to sign into law, mm -hmm. authored and offered before. Now some of these you've been battling for years and we're finally able to years. get through. Give us some highlights yeah. of the session on the, on the pro-business side. Absolutely, and, and that was one of my top goals in running for governor was to work on creating the best business environment possible so we could retain jobs and create jobs 
improve our workforce, create a better quality educated workforce, and frankly, even to reform government itself. So we, we focus on those business issues because if we don't get Oklahoma's economy back on track, then we're not going to have the money for the roads and the bridges and education, law enforcement, corrections, those types of important priorities. So we were able to pass major lawsuit reform in the state of Oklahoma, things we had talked about for years and years, not been able to get done before, mm -hmm. which will really set Oklahoma apart as being business friendly. We passed major workers' compensation reform also, long time subject I worked on for many, many years. It's important to help businesses be able to control their cost as a business, you know, they want to know if they invest money here, they're going to get a good rate of return back on their money. And we also address the workforce itself and education, six major pieces of education reform that we talked about many, many times, mm -hmm. but no one ever thought we'd be able to get done. And so out of all that, other states are actually looking at Oklahoma. And in fact, I was with some people earlier today from Houston and Louisiana as we announced a major job mm -hmm. expansion in, in Oklahoma City. And they were all bragging about how much we had done, and they, they noticed it, they paid attention to it. So we're starting to get a lot of attention mm -hmm. with that. And of course, government modernization, government reform, right-sizing government, limiting waste and efficiency was another core piece of my agenda this year. And we got some incredible things done with government modernization. Mm -hmm. State has very low unemployment. That has to make you happy. A very, very good low, low unemployment. Now, what we do have in the state of Oklahoma is underemployment, mm -hmm. and that's why I've been trying to focus on industries that are that create high-paying jobs, not just a job, not a minimum wage job, but a good-paying job. And I'll give you an instance on that: the aerospace industry, great-paying jobs, pay twice the average of, of other jobs. I've been really focusing on that for many, many years. Spoke at the Aerospace Summit last week. Went to California a couple weeks ago to the International Wind Conference. You know, wind mm -hmm. energy is a big industry in the state of Oklahoma, pays great. Of course, energy sector is always very important to Oklahoma, small business manufacturing, all those things. Mm -hmm. One thing you've been uh, met with that uh, nobody can anticipate, but I'm sure has taken some of your time and some of your energy, are the natural disasters that we've uh, had here in Oklahoma. Not that we aren't used to some, but with the wildfires and the tornadoes and, and the like uh, since you've been governor. Uh, has that extracted a toll on your energy? Oh, no, not not at all. I mean, it's always tragic whenever we have some type of natural disaster in, right. in Oklahoma. In fact, it was interesting. You might remember the day I was sworn in on governor. Yes. You know, we, we had sleet, we had snow, we had, you know, <laughs> cold temperatures, 20 degrees below zero. In fact, some guy down southeastern Oklahoma when I was campaigning told me it was going to be a cold day in Oklahoma before we elected a woman governor. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was being hateful to me, but he was actually, he was actually giving me the, the weather report. He was predicting yeah. that, that, that <laughs> snowfall <laughs> we had. <laughs> in all seriousness, I mean, we, we had several major ice storms the minute I got sworn into office, which we had to deal with. Oh. We've had grass fires. We've had tornadoes, as, as you know. I mean. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago when we had, I think, around eight of them that skipped through Oklahoma, 14 different communities across the state. But uh, we've had been some flooding. You've been particularly effective, I thought, from a, looking at from the outside looking in, no, uh, in getting uh, emergency relief and getting help to the people who are, are out of their homes and all. It seems to me that those needs are being met in Oklahoma certainly as well as anywhere, if not better than most places. Well, it's important to stay ahead of the game, and that's what I always have tried to do. I, I, unfortunately been through a lot of these tragedies in Oklahoma because yeah. of my years of service. So I've done yeah. these things, I know what to do, and we jumped on them early. A few weeks ago we had Lieutenant Governor Todd Lamb on the show. He, he went out of his way to point out how, how uh, he thought it was a good position for him because you had been Lieutenant Governor and you knew from, from maybe better than him exactly what he was going to be going through in this situation. So how is the relationship with you and the Lieutenant Governor uh, been put together and how is it different from when you were Lieutenant Governor? Well, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Lamb's doing a great job. He's traveling all over the state. Um, he's out spreading the message. He always tells me, Governor, I'm out telling your message. You know, it's a great, it's <laughs> what I need you to be. You know, good, good lieutenant for me. And he has done a, a super job. But, you know, the Lieutenant Governor was actually uh, one of Governor Keating's drivers, interns when I was Lieutenant Governor a long time ago, back in 1994, so I've known the Lieutenant Governor mm -hmm. since he was a, a young mm -hmm. man finishing school and of course going to law school, so I've known him a long time. So I've had a great working mm -hmm. relationship with him. 
I've, I've had the opportunity to be able to share what I knew about the office. I mm -hmm. hope that's been very beneficial to him. And I've asked him to do some specific things like be the small business advocate for the state. Governor Keating gave me the opportunity to work on small business issues. It's very important to my agenda and he's a great person to carry that forth. And Governor Henry was very cordial, very helpful in the transition when I left Congress to go into the governor's office and his staff worked very well with my staff and, and that's what we should do. We should all be professional, courteous, helpful and because we all love the state of Oklahoma, we all care about it and we want it to move forward. Well, what do you think, uh, are, are we going to be seeing tort reform again, lawsuit reform, whatever term we choose to pick or have we done about all we can do? Well, Kent, we certainly had a very successful session. You know, we put a hard cap right. on non-economic damages. We dealt with eliminating joint and several liability. Right. Uh, we did periodic payments versus lump sum payments. And uh, there's some legislation dealing with jury disclosure of, of non-taxable awards, those type of things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think we need to let what we've done go into effect see if and it's going to do happens. what we hope mm -hmm. it's going to do, what we intend for it to do. Mm -hmm. And certainly I'm always open to tweaking things, to looking at better ideas, but I think we've done a great job this legislative session. Let, let me follow up on that just a minute if I may. Uh, one of the things that uh, was emphasized in the effort to support tort reform is that not exclusively but principally uh, the medical community was pretty upset with malpractice rates and things like that. These reforms will take a while uh, to implement and to have a corresponding uh, effect on malpractice rates. I'm sure we can't tell yet, but do you anticipate that, that that's going to be uh, helped by what was done this time? Well, I, I certainly do think that the reform we did will lower medical malpractice insurance premiums for the medical community, and that's very important to Oklahoma because we need more primary care physicians in our state. We need more physicians in general, but we also need to lower the cost of health insurance and health care costs to the general public. And certainly that's been a big issue that's been debated not only here in Oklahoma, but nationally with President Obama's you know, health care reform bill or, or maybe big government takeover of health care would be a more <laughs> accurate description in my, my terminology. But you know, certainly I think that the tort reform that we did will go a long ways in helping to lower health care costs. Governor Mary Fallon, today's guest on The Verdict. We'll be right back. The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda Cobb-Greetham. I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits, you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic, and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. In 25 years, world energy demand will grow by 44% with oil and natural gas largely meeting the need. The question is, will America's demand be met by American resources? Oklahoma says yes. We're developing the largest oil and natural gas discoveries America has seen in 40 years. It's creating jobs and millions in tax revenue for schools, roads, and hospitals. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry, advancing our state, empowering our nation. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers are visiting with the Governor, Mary Fallon. Kent? Uh, 
Governor, just to kind of on a, on a private note, you've got a trip to uh, Ireland coming up, I yes. understand, for a very fine, fun event. Can you just tell our viewers what it's about? It's a wedding. That's a wedding. My first child's getting married, and so we're, we're leaving the, this Sunday, actually, all the family. In fact, my, my husband and the boys have left today. They're already going over, so we're real excited. But my daughter wanted a destination wedding. She wanted a very small family group. There's just a two, three of her friends going. And How'd she select so, Ireland? Well, I don't know. Oh. I think she just thought it was a beautiful country and a beautiful place, and she convinced me that it would be cheaper than having a big wedding. So <laughs> I said, whatever you want, sweetheart, you know. Our first wedding, so we're real excited. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, changing the subject, I'm glad that's happening. I wish you all good luck with that. Um, it's been not too long ago that uh, Oklahoma rejected the $55 million federal grant for the establishment of the insurance exchange. And there was a lot in the press about it, but can you just kind of tell us why, why that happened and what was the rationale behind that? Well, a little bit of history on that is Governor Henry and his administration had submitted a letter to apply for the Early Innovator Grant for the, for, uh, the federal health care money to come in to look at the exchanges which are required by federal right. law to be done in each of the 50 states. And of course, the federal law is the current law of the land. I was in Congress. I did not vote for President Obama's health care system. I don't like big government taking over my personal choice, your personal choice, anybody's choices of what type of health care, how much, how, when, you know, what kind of health care we're going to have. I just believe the private sector marketplace does a better job of providing services for our citizens when it can. Certainly there's always a role for government to play in, in different areas of our life, but in making decisions about our health care, I think we should have that choice and freedom. So I didn't support that. When I became governor, I actually signed on uh, to a lawsuit with the Attorney General to challenge the constitutionality mm -hmm. of the individual mandate by President Obama's health care plan, and that is going forth in our state. But then we got notice after I'd been in office a couple of months that Oklahoma was going to receive a $54 million grant to set up an information exchange. And the interesting part about that, Kent, is that the Oklahoma legislature had passed legislation in 2009 mm -hmm. before the Obama health care plan even became law. The Ohio. Before we even had the, the debate right to set up an information exchange mm -hmm. to allow an individual to go on the internet and to shop and compare health insurance plans and to find the best plan for them at the best price with the best type of coverage. And so that's what we were trying to accomplish was to set up an information exchange which the legislature had already voted on. We got the, the federal grant, but there were a lot of people who were very concerned that it would implement or look like uh, President Obama's health care bill would be implemented in Oklahoma. I'm not for that, but we just decided that to eliminate any type of question about what you know, our intentions are as a state, that we would reject the federal money and that we would just move forward in uh, continuing to improve better access to care Oklahoma's way. We, we think we have the best solutions possible with our own innovations in the state of Oklahoma. We're going to have our own information exchange anyway, are we not, under the Oklahoma system? Well, it is you know, currently something that the legislature passed yes. and, and uh, talked about implementing in 2009. So we're going to take some time this summer to talk, continue to talk through with our legislative leaders. Our legislators are having some town hall meetings across the state to talk about how can we create better access to care, but yet we also want to continue to talk about how can Oklahoma provide its own innovative solutions to health care. Mm -hmm. Where are we in your agenda for one one session down, but but three more to go in this term? Where are we going forward? Where do you what do you want to accomplish next year and the year after? Where do you what do you see on the on the horizon? Well, we've already been talking about our legislative agenda moving forth into next year, early mm -hmm. next year, because you have to prepare ahead of time. You got a lot done this year. Well, we did get a lot done, and so we're excited to move into the next one. I actually started several groups of committees back in November. The minute I won the election that were part of my transition teams and ask them to look at tax reform, look at economic development, look at aerospace, look at the agriculture sector, um, education, you know, those type of core type subjects. And I still have that core committee of people who have been putting together the best of the best ideas around the nation, but also looking at Oklahoma's strengths, its opportunities, its weaknesses, and its threats to our state so that we can put forth some great proposals. 
but my, one of my core proposals for next year will be to look at Oklahoma's tax code and how mm -hmm. we can continue to make Oklahoma more friendly as a state for investment for families to want to live in the state so we can not only retain jobs but grow the economy. I mean, I want to put the pedal on the metal on the, on the gas and get our economy going as, as strong as possible within our state. So tax reform will certainly be high on my agenda. I'm still dead set on making sure that we eliminate waste and inefficiency in government. We did some great things this year. I asked for a major uh, information technology bill to be passed in the legislature. It passed. It was huge. It was not easy getting it through. We consolidated some of our state agencies, so I'm going to continue to focus on government efficiency, efficiency, saving taxpayers money, continuing to implement the education reforms that we've done. And then I've got a lot of trips planned this summer and into the fall with the Commerce Department to recruit business mm -hmm. and also thank companies that have company locations in Oklahoma to thank them for their investment in our state. We're going to a Biosphere conference. I've been to the, the International Wind Conference. I'm going to uh, Chicago, to New York, to Los Angeles, even going down to Texas, see if I can steal some business from Texas. <laughs> Good. So uh, we're going to be very aggressive on the business recruiting front. How's the family, this is completely off the subject, how's the family adapting to life in the mansion? Well, the family is the most important thing because if the yeah. family's not happy, nobody's going to be happy. <laughs> but you know, we're having a great time. It's always an adjustment when you change lifestyles. Uh, my husband's doing wonderful. He had to make the adjustment between trying to balance being a professional man. You know, yeah. He's, he's a, a lawyer in the community, but he also has a family farming interest. So we go back to the farm and we harvest wheat. Mm -hmm. It's always fun to do. We actually enjoy doing that. And then we have six children between us. And so we had one high school graduation, one law school graduation in his MBA. We had my daughter getting married, my son's down at OU, and then uh, uh, Wade has a daughter also that's working. So we've always got all this family balancing stuff. Well, we got a, do a son that's a, a doctor that uh, finished his residency. So a lot of family activity. We got one little problem at the mansion We've got someone that um, has been causing a little bit of trouble, and his name's Rascal. <laughs> you may have heard about Rascal. Rascal is the dog. And the dog has uh, decided dog. he likes being at the mansion because he gets a little bit of attention from the staff that's there. And um, he's, What kind of dog is Rascal? Well, he's a white lab. Oh, boy. But oh. we, he's an outside dog, but we let him in the house a couple of times when the weather got really chilly and when the storms are out and he has a bad habit of snooping around the kitchen and if there's a plate on the stove or on the cabinet he'll pull off the plate and he'll eat whatever's there. He's broken into the pavilion which is the building where you host uh, public events and actually eat, eat in several bags of hamburger buns whenever we cook out around you know the backyard. So we, we've had some challenges with the dog. <laughs> Need more security for Rascal. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he's, he's the king of the hill right now. Yeah. 30 seconds to go. What would you like the uh, Oklahomans to know about, uh, about your life at, at this stage? Well, I'm, I'm just very honored, very pleased to have the opportunity to serve the state of Oklahoma. And, you know, my campaign slogan was nobody work hard for Oklahoma, nobody. And we have been working very hard. I'm extremely pleased with the legislative session. We're going to work very, very hard over the next several years throughout my term to do everything we can to grow Oklahoma's economy, focus on eliminating waste and duplication of services, focus on giving our children a better, brighter education uh, moving forward, and be very aggressive in telling the Oklahoma story, you know, the great things that we've already done, and to go out and tell what a wonderful place Oklahoma is to live, great quality of life, low cost of living. It's a wonderful place to raise a family. We're going to tell the story. All right. Governor Mary Fallon, our guest on The Verdict, thank Th you for being thank on. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Thank you. Kent and I will have a final word when we get back. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. 
loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. In Oklahoma, we enjoy a high quality of life due to good, well-paying jobs. Commercial real estate professionals play a significant role in bringing new businesses and investments to Oklahoma. The commercial real estate community has come together to market Oklahoma's commercial properties nationwide through a free public website, okcommercialproperty.com. We are invested in keeping Oklahoma strong and growing because economic development ensures quality of life. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers are wrapping up the show with Governor Mary Fallon. Always gracious with her time and very effective with her leadership. We really do appreciate her uh, coming to visit with us and tell us about how uh, the state of affairs uh, turns out after the legislature has adjourned. Looks like we're in pretty good shape. Absolutely. She's a, a real champ to come on the show as many times as she had and, and uh, give us her views about the world. We have a uh, website information if you'd like to visit there and know more about the governor's office. You can go to that website at OK dot gov slash governor that's okay dot gov slash governor we also have a website you've probably been there it's the verdict dot tv you can go there and tell us about a show that you'd like to see on an upcoming edition of the verdict you're also there's lots of pictures of us and if you're collecting really those are. at home um, some of them are 10 be, years old sure. <laughs> some of them are a little dated but uh, don't pay any attention to that uh, we are this was show number 532 yep so yeah, number uh, 533 will be here before you know it. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be next week. It'll be bigger and better than ever. And we'll see you then. So long. Till next time on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.